Let me just tell you what a thrill it is to be here and how excited I am that Mesa College sponsored this show. Uh, I want to mention Alexandra, Alexandra Moctezuma, who is here. Right, right here, Alexandra Moctezuma is the director of the gallery. And Pat Vine, who is also here, handled all the logistical work. And uh, since we're also talking about Mesa College, I want to mention that Ross Stockwell, who we'll be meeting later, just wave your hand, Ross, um, is a professor here. And Jeannie Shank, who is right here. Uh, Jeannie uh, not only is a professor here, but she was an incredibly key component. When you see the catalog for the show, there is one sentence for each book. And Jeannie Shank poured over all the artist statements and, and the descriptions and wrote a one sentence description. And every artist that I've talked to has said, that's my book. That was an incredible feat. But the catalog is when you open it up, do you see how the booklets slide out? Uh, this is Kyle Ullman was the engineer for this. And um, there are articles and stories about the books. There's an interactive CD which has motion pictures and sound chips. Um, Julie Sadler was the engineer for that. And then there's also a booklet that has pictures and uh, the, the descriptions of every book in the show, all 52 of them. So, And this is available from Mesa College. Right here. Now, we're going to start with a book uh, by Joel Beeman. Joel is one of four artists in the show from the uh, Columbia College Graduate School of Book Arts. And as you've been driving down the road, you've probably been, been stuck behind a semi-truck and have noticed the hazardous materials symbol on the back, like this. And so what Joel did is he um, made a book. These are like pages, aren't they? Uh, printed on metal with a special two-part epoxy ink, similar to the use on trucks for it to be weather resistant. And he used um, pictures taken with his pinhole camera. And do you know what a pinhole camera is? You know, it's just like a camera. Instead of a lens, it just has a pinhole. And when you have a black box with a tiny hole, then the light enters it and it forms an image upside down on the opposite wall. The interesting thing about Joel's camera is that it's a 1984 GMC step van that he's converted into a pinhole camera. Uh, Joel uh, took this van, mounted a, a little cylinder using PVC pipe with a two millimeter hole in it that he can rotate. And he can travel around the country taking pictures well, inside the van, there's an imaging plate where he has um, lipo chrome film that, that rolls across. He uses the whole van. Yes, the film I know is 100 feet long. It's on a roll. And as I'm not mistaken, I think it's 31 inches wide. So um, <laughs> incredible res res resolution. It, it's it, it's um, a circle print because it comes from a round hole. Charlotte Hedlund uh, book is about crow augury, meaning how you can predict the future and success of things by uh, how many crows uh, appear. You know, you think this is really uh, 12, uh, this is up to 12 different crows, and the more crows appear, you know, it depends upon what the, the, the fortune is. Uh, but you have to realize that one crow plus two crows plus three crows plus four crows, that's 78 crows that have to get cut out for, for each book. And um, just to give you a little um, insight, uh, 
into what you can expect that if uh, two crows show up, a surprise, a change for the better, joy. Six, money, wealth, occasional greed or theft. <laughs> Eleven, uncertainty, waiting. Uh, at one time, crows were used to, to tell, forecast events. Now, MJ Gerke is from St. Louis, Missouri, and she was excited about kaleidoscopes. And so all of the pages have kaleidoscope pages. Um, she made five models to, in order to get it to work right. Uh, the sixth one was supposed to be the final one, but the dog ate it. <laughs> so she had to start all over again. Uh, it comes with a kaleidoscope that you can turn the pages and that they can fit here as well to give an added dimension. But um, one of the things that's interesting in this show, it's called Stand and Deliver Engineering Sculpture into a Book Format. And so there are two things that we were looking for. One is a three-dimensional approach to books. And the other one was the engineering. And I think that was what, that's what's really exciting about this show, is how people had these problems. Like, how do you get revolving kaleidoscope pages into a book? And, and you know, they set out, and people with no experience set out to solve these problems. And I think one of the interesting th things as well is that of the 52 artists, I think 80% are women. Uh, one of them actually had a degree in engineering. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and the, the solutions are just amazingly creative. This particular book is plugged in. It, it normally comes with a battery. And this book is um, sort of a, a selection. The actual book has five towers. This one has one tower. And it starts with a poem called The Lookout. And then the tower lights up. And the light comes on when the book is open. It shuts off when the book is closed. This is Carol Barton of um, Maryland. This book is called Karn, uh, and it's by a San Diego book artist, Gloria Helfgott. Is there a chance that... Los, Los Angeles. Is there a chance that Gloria is here today? She's not coming to Thursday. Okay. Uh, but notice how the three-dimensional approach starts right on the cover. A uh, cairn is a cave or a mound used in Celtic times for religious purposes. And uh, the three-dimensional uh, part of it is included on the inside. And she has cut away pages to compensate for it. And then in the center, the center actually opens up into an enclosed space of worship. Right here. Like that. Now, um, six books were selected for honors. There was a book selected for, well, I, I will tell you as we come al across them. But the book that was considered the best crafted book was by Linda Smith in uh, Arizona, Tempe, Arizona. It's called Inside Chance, and it starts with a die, like a dice. You see different dots on each one with the world on the inside. And she used a poem by Alberto Rios. The poem actually only had eight lines. But she reconfigured it so that the lines wove in and out among themselves <laughs> and eventually returns to the beginning. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a nice feat? You know, not only of engineering, but of, of literature as well. Paper, you know, isn't that incredible? Uh, the the globe on the inside is paper mache. It, it has to be paper because you see it's it's cut out on the inside as well. You can imagine what a thrill it was to see these books uh, come in. Well, uh, I'll actually, you know, speaking of engineering. Busy as a Bee is by um, Maria Wink Winkler from Northern California. But be, you know, it's called Busy as a Bee. So of course, what, what's the shape of the page? <laughs> Hexagons. And you see it opens up. This is one sheet of paper. It's about women's work. In this case, it's uh, inkjet printed. Deborah Kogan 
did this wonderful book, which was really powerful. It, it was about a man who was brutally assaulted and because of brain damage lost all of his cognitive functions and had to relearn everything basic in terms of writing and talking and speaking. Brushing his teeth. And one side of it, uh, she heard this on the NPR radio show, Fresh Air. <laughs> and uh, so one side of it is about his uh, reinventing himself and about the rituals that we, that we develop to, to add meaning to our life. And the other is about her development as an artist with uh, origami paper instructions, calligraphy exercises, writing. Kyle Ullman was the um, paper engineer. And Kyle said, I want to be able to tell a story in one second. Now the story has to have a challenge. It has to have the climax approach it has to have the uh, obstacle overcome. It has to have the reward. In other words, it has to have a beginning, a middle, and the end. And I want to do this in one second. The book is called Momentum. So there's the moment and then the fact that it goes on. So the clock is ticking, right? And as we do it, we see the hands climbing the diving tower. The diver is going to dive off and he's going to come up victorious. All in one motion of the hand. Diver diving off, swinging up, coming up a winner. Now, isn't that an interesting concept? How do you tell a story in one second? With the beginning, a middle, and an end. For the camera. <laughs> Now, uh, Dorothy Ewell lives in San Francisco, had a nephew she was very fond of, and the nephew said, what do I have to do to get one of your books? And a year later, the nephew was dead. And so for the funeral, Dorothy said, he's going to get his book. And she wanted to create a book that would be part of the ceremony and a book dedicated to her nephew. And so she wrote this poem to him, which was printed on rose leaves. And on the urn, this formed a necklace around the urn, but it was also printed here. And the book is designed so that the, when it's opened up, you see pages of Ian, and then on the back, there are stories and comments about him. And this is put together with uh, Chinese paper money that you burn to, to, uh, to celebrate uh, people. And, and you see, there's this, it's just this incredibly engineered book so that it folds flat. But you see how all these come off to, to face you? And, and see this, this uh, uh, pleated a, 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 a accordion fold at the bottom. And it's designed so that the necklace fits inside each, each one of, in front of each one of these pages. But the necklace is very fragile, so as we're shipping it, we're, we're shipping the necklace separate. Well, let's continue along this <laughs> somber theme. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very unusual, but you know, I, it's, it's actually an interesting thing to point out that I hope all the artists in this group get across is that we think of pop-ups and movable books as being for kids. But actually, you know, pop-ups and movable books can, can tell very poignant stories. And probably none more so than this book by Jacques Fournier of uh, Montreal, Canada. Um, you can't see it but blind embossed, meaning it's embossed without any um, ink, it, it's just set in, is the date, the 6th of April, 1944. And when you open it up, it's a memorial. And it includes a photo of the house where in 1944 there were 44 children, Jewish children that were hiding out. And they were discovered and around um, 
<laughs> the edges are the names of all 44 children that were killed in Auschwitz that were found in this particular house. This is a photograph by Edward Hillel. Can you see the names of the children? And, and the years old that they were. 10 years, 12 years, 8 years. And he um, describes the story on the inside of the box. Now, we've got a really nice treat here in that we're coming back to San Diego. And this is called the ABC Darium of the Universe. And for, we're going to start from the beginning to the end with hi historical facts, stories, gossip of, about science. And it's done with a, an amazing uh, virtuosity in that there are these great fold-out pages here. It's letterpress printed by two San Diego artists. Sybil Rubottom is one of them and Jim Mahachek. It's one of those names that has every letter of the alphabet except <laughs> the, the vowels in it. Okay, he's a professor here, a printing professor, does outstanding work in the two of them. Uh, I mean, this is part of a cooperative press that has done some amazing books. So it's a real honor to have one of their books in the show. Um, if I can find it quickly, I know that there's a flexagon in here. Yep. And a flexagon, you think, has one or two sides, but actually, as you fold it, you see it has many sides. Now, does, does everyone know what a flag book is? A, a flag book is a book when it opens up there, the, the pages are like little flags. And some of them go one way, and some go the other way. And of all the types of books that were submitted for the show, this is the, 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 um, the structure that was most frequently presented. But um, you know, when you submit a book to a show, you think, well, will the, the, will the curator like it? But it's not so much whether you're not com competing for the curator's attention as you're competing against the other books that are submitted. And as in this case, when there are a lot of flag books, you know, we can only pick a, a couple. And, and in this particular case, we picked three of them, and all because they had something different. And in this case, um, this is by Antonia Nelson. And as you can see, when you open the flag book, see how some of the pages go one, some of the fingers go one way and some the other way? Now, if, if uh, you can't see, let me know. And afterwards, I'll hang around and we'll talk about any particular one that you didn't get to see. But um, Tony was interested in the fact that with, we think of time as being divided into equally measured components, one second at a time. But in reality, time doesn't unfold that way. There are certain times, like before or after a traumatic event, where time slows down and you remember every millisecond of, of what's happening as it unfolds before you. There are other times when you're so excited that time just flies by and you don't even notice it. And so this was her uh, exploration of time. And she not only included the flags, but she also included these geometric uh, st structures as well. Uh, just back up a little bit so I can show you Jen Thomas. Jen is another one of the students from the Chicago, um, Columbia College Chicago Center for Book and Paper Arts. Jen has not had good success with her uh, renting apartments. She says, my track record wasn't exactly stellar, so I looked for classmates, friends, and suggestions to see if renting had been as painful for them as it had been for me. She said uh, this was born from her experience of 25 different roommates in nine different apartments over the last 11 years. And what she did is she came up with a board game. You see how the apartment building opens up into it? And she says it's very simple. Be the first to go from renting a crappy apartment to owning a shiny new home while dodging scum-sucking landlords, mentally ill roommates, hoodlums, and incorrigible pets along the way. Right now, I may still be playing the rental game, 
but at least I can see home ownership getting closer and closer with every move I make. I do want to tell you that I've talked with Jen since the show opened. She's in a new apartment. <laughs> Another one of the uh, uh, students that are graduated from the Columbia College in Chicago was Sean Sheehy. And this book is called Welcome to the Neighborhood. And this is a book that works on two levels. It's a great book for kids because it talks about animals and their habitats. Can you see where the snail lives? And the hummingbird? The spider? In this particular case, the spider, that web is cut out by hand. I first saw this book two years ago at the last movable book conference. And at that time, it was just individual sheets. And if you looked on the back of the sheets, they were cereal box covers. <laughs> so it's nice to, to see the actual book. The sickleback. The wasp. The mole. <laughs> See the mole sticking out of the hole? And this is the bee. Remember we talked about how the bee, there are six sides, and that's because their home has six sides here as well. And the last one, oh, that's all of them together. Good for you. They're all neighbors. But it's not only a book for children, it's also for adults. It's a way of uh, encouraging interest in sustainable living and how working in, in contact with nature. Now, as long as we're all here, um, we come to another award winner. And this was the uh, best integration of text and engineering. Um, has everyone seen a flip book where you flip the pages? Well, this is kind of like a rotary flip book. <laughs> the stand for it is uh, cut out with a laser. And the pages are uh, uh, inkjet printed. Now he's made a series of these. Uh, and I, one other thing I'll mention is a lot of the books, you know, you think they'd be very expensive and they're, they're not all that expensive. This particular book with the laser printed stand is $125, but you also get a second disc with it. Or you can get the commercial one, which is $30. It has a, a cardboard base. So, the, you know, it's amazing that they're not. I'll mention that Ann Cronenberg is from New York and she explores the, the, the tendency of people to use reptiles to uh, signify women's sexuality, creativity, and goddess power. Uh, and has many multi-layered images. The award for best use of um, serious content went to Amber Past from Chiapas, Mexico from this book. Uh, uh, just seemingly has no end. And it started with the fact that in the New York Times she read an article about the Warka mask that had been looted from the uh, Baghdad Museum and had been found buried. And she was reflecting on all the things that had happened during the lifetime of this mask. In particularly in that part of the world, the discovery of writing, the discovery of wine, the development of the alphabet and of books. And at the same time, on the same page in the New York Times, there was articles of Iraqi women who were, being, who were uh, struggling to save their children and fleeing the bombs. So it was not only um, an ode to uh, the passage of time and all the achievements, but it was kind of an anti-war message at the same time. Going down to Tennessee, we come to the book of Genesis a tent show for birds and other small creatures. Um, Cynthia Marsh moved to Tennessee to be a, a professor at a college there 
And this particular book, when it ties up, folds into this little package here. The text is all made from uh, wood type that was printed and then scanned with a computer and then printed to make this show where uh, someone in it would, it would kind of direct their attention towards the great outdoors and the wonders of that. And it also has this church-like structure that it's in. Larry Thomas did a book in which he explored what would happen if someone sat down to write their will and realized they didn't have much to leave and no one to leave it to. <laughs> the book, he did it in this shape of the book because it has no beginning and no end. It's a it's circular, it just keeps rolling along. This is Elsie Basdell Ellis from the state of Washington. Her first pop-up book but it's called The Quest for the Ethical Compass. So she sets out to explore different administrations as to whether they lost, misplaced, or rediscovered the ethical compass, starting with John F. Kennedy and the Bay of Pigs, and going, uh, this is uh, corporate stock traders who have their own form of liquid moolah juice here, and they have trading cards. This is for uh, Martha Stewart, Mark Belnick, uh, Dennis Kowalski. Uh, this is uh, LB, the Gulf of Tonkin resolution. And, you know, the research as to why uh, perhaps the evidence was sketchy here. She did it in the form of a fable. But look at the amount of work that went in, into this. I mean, you know, it's not just the illustrations, it's, uh, it's the, uh, you know, th th there's a serious message that goes along here. And a uh, particular concern is Warren Christopher for the genocide in Rwanda comes under attack. Um, uh, this is John Ashcroft uh, fighting liberty with the Patriot Act. <laughs> Uh, Bill Clinton's in here with Monica Lewinsky under the desk. Her, her uh, approach is kind of universal and scathing, <laughs> but powerful. And you know, when you think pop-up books for kids, it's actually a great way to deliver the message for adults as well. Now, I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. The this is the book for best use of unusual materials. It's by Debbie Chodoff in Katona, New York. And it spells out the word procrastination and the hinges are egg timers. So that when you turn it over, time starts running out. And you have to just sit, you have to procrastinate as the time continues to, to, to run out. Tara O'Brien is from Pennsylvania, and this is called At the Aquarium. And essentially, it's a carousel book. It's a carousel book because it can open up in a circle. It's sometimes called a star book. I prefer carousel. And there are different layers. And in this case, uh, in one sense, there's three layers. There's the background, there's the octopus, there's the viewer. But there's actually a fourth layer, which is you, because you're also part of this project. And again, there are spectators who are viewing the octopus, but then there are also spectators, you, that are viewing the spectators. And in this case, her uh, sympathies are definitely with the octopus, in that at the end, the, the octopus escapes. Um, remember I said how books often compete not so much for the curator's attention, but for other books that are submitted. And in this case, there were three books that were concertina and had a silhouette approach to it. And of those three, you know, there was only one we could select. That, that, well, we, isn't that nice? You know, I, I like it because there's this nice sense of story, but not a, not a word in the text. Now, this is a, a, a wonderful book by C.J. Grossman. It's called Out Victims of Gay Violence, Gay Murder. And this is a model of the actual book 
which was made with real doors and opened up. And again, it's a flag book, but this was kind of special because it opens up into the gay flag, the rainbow flag. And on it are the names of people like Gwen, a 19-year-old transsexual that was bludgeoned to death by three teenagers who would rather that she be dead than, they, than for them to be considered gay. Um, again, these wonderful, powerful stories told. Warner Pfeiffer is a sculptor who accepted the challenge to come up with a sculptural book. And this is his book that opens up with all these shapes. By the way, how many different parts do you think this has? Any ideas? 11. Yeah. You, you, I, I thought, I was surprised. I, I thought it had way more than that. Warner Pfeiffer is from upstate New York. This is Val Van Sice from Cleveland, Ohio. It's called A Little Knowledge. And it's kind of fun because in order to read the text, you have to stick your fingers in the flames. And, you know, isn't that kind of the way it is? It's about lust and desire. And you not only stick your fingers in the flames, but you see the reflection as, as you do. And again, you know, it folds up in this wonderful sculptural shape, but it does open up in a sequential manner. This is the Brown Boys. Another carousel book. Remember carousel books open up in a round manner. In this particular case, it talks about six decades of these brothers, his brothers from Denver, Colorado, growing up together. And his thought was that, you know, having a um, successful, stable family in a disposable time is a, is a form of standing and delivering in its own way. You know, isn't, isn't that a nice, powerful uh, approach? Ah, the bug book. <laughs> Emily Reiser, also of Chicago, decided she wanted to tell a story about a beg bed bug. So this is the book. It's got a mat. And it's about a little girl who gets in bed and she's very afraid about what's underneath the bed. And the text changes as she gets more involved in this. And finally a bed bug appears and says, you're worried, but didn't you know? And at that case, the bed falls apart and the bug says, you're a bed bug too. <laughs> Isn't that something? You know, imagine first of all imagining this and then working out the engineering of molding the parts and constructing it and printing it. And in this case, uh, Emily Reiser also made the paper for it. This is the last of the flag books. But again, a very different approach is called Frida Kahlo, a body of work. And you see the flags here in which Frida Kahlo is wearing her artwork that she created against the backdrop of um, her portrait in, in honor of uh, Leon Trotsky that she did in Mexico City. This is one of a series of books that um, Freya Diamond is the artist in, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, did. Uh, one of them is of Georgia O'Keeffe and her body of work. This is Paul Johnson in England called The Treehouse of Time. Isn't that incredible? This is actually a wonderful book that Elaine Antonuk did here in San Diego. And uh, the one reason that uh, personally appealed to me is it dates back to the cuneiform tablets, which indicated that books always have been sculptural, have always been three-dimensional. The book itself is a three-dimensional artifact. But uh, uh, Elaine, do you want to tell us a few things? It's a collaborative book. It's a book. collaborative book with Sarah, Rubot, uh, um, Sarah Rosenbluth. And what we did was um, 
sort of charted the evolution of um, hieroglyphs from pictographs to abstract forms. But it, um, it's also um, movable. Uh, there's a metaphor about change and about movement in, in how this happens. And so we've illustrated that on the tablets, plus we've um, found some translations from the third millennium and BC and uh, uh, included that. So it's letterpress, polymer plate, and some construction. Uh, that you created this, you photographed it, and then you letterpress printed it, and then it's, it's put, it, uh, put, put it on these, these tablets. Yeah, Is the, that correct? The poly polymer plate first. Right. And the letterpress on of just the type. The polymer plate is of the image. And this is translation of a text from uh, 1700 BC. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 3,700 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, anyone who thinks that a book is a codex, you know, has a spine in this, mm -hmm. you have to realize that everything that we know about books, the uh, libraries, all started with clay tablets. Very nice. Thank you, Elaine. A beautiful book. I see here this book, I, and I particularly want to mention it because it was one of the first books selected. And we often think of engineering as solving complex problems, how we can add something to make something work better. But engineering is also a matter of simplifying and making things uh, even more simpler. And this has to do with um, Beverly Burbank's boat. It's a Crosby Cape Cod. Uh, boat that uh, her partner built the boat, she built the engine. And this is the sale for it in which she talks about her impressions of the book. She says, um, she is a boat of extremes, pure joy when the wind, weather, and tide are with us, abject agony when repairs overwhelm or when problems arise while underway. It's a, uh, this is from her boat. And this is a book that she specifically requested that people could pick up and handle because she said that's the only way that you, know, you can really experience the book. And while we're here and we're talking about engineering, uh, Barbara Michener from Idaho decided to write a book when two events coincided. One of them had to do with her writing her memoirs and digging a well on her property. And so she came up with this, which has, can you hear the water? And there are two cylinders. One of them is about her personal experiences, and the others are about um, uh, drilling the well. <laughs> You know, who would have thought? <laughs> Peter and Donna Thomas are going to be here later in the week. Uh, this is their, uh, Peter is a world-class ukulele player as well as a longtime book artist. You know, being a, any artist is very difficult. Book artists especially challenging. Peter and Donna Thomas have been book artists for probably 30 years, have raised two daughters and sent them to college. Uh, that is, that's in itself is incredible. This is uh, Carrie Cushman's Ode to Work. And I'm going to point out that Carrie made the lunchbox, made the iron, welded it. And the paper for her book um, was the paper, she made the paper herself, letterpress printed the pages, and the paper are from the blue jeans that workers at the plant where she was training, they donated her blue jeans, and she, she used them to make the paper for, for this book. In the Middle Ages, there was a, a, a type of book, sometimes called a girdle book. Do you know that girdle uh, in old times meant belt? And when it's used in the Bible, that's what it means as a belt. And it's because there was a book that, would, that had a strap on that would fit over your belt. So as you were traveling, you could refer to it. It's also called a vatimecum book or a bat book. 
and this re recalls the experiences that she's had with bats at her home in Iowa. But you see the pages open up like bat wings. You get this wonderful structure here. If you take all the pages and open them up, you know, we tend to think of book arts as being really a, a new phenomenon, but you know, you just get this wonderful sequence of, of pages as it, as it opens. But you know, book arts really owe their history and, and their excitement to um, a, a long history of interesting books, from Vatimecums to cuneiform tablets. While I'm putting this back together, we get to meet another San Diego book artist, um, Ross Stockwell. Uh, if you've been in here before, you know that it's normally open. Um, but I wanted to show you the sequence of things. It, uh, it's called Haiku, which uh, is a kind of poem that you read as meditation. And it's quiet room, and then here's the, the room. Uh, sort of nice place to be, I think. And then we have sitting and thinking about. And then when you flip it over, you have to do some work. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure this is great for the time, comic timing. This opens up into a three-dimensional man. And the text is, in a quiet room, sitting and thinking about being someplace else. <laughs> and you know, I think we've all been a at that place. But he's also, and this is of course what the genesis of the book was. Well, the genesis, I suppose, was I used to do um, Christmas cards years ago um, that folded and cut you know, and so forth. And uh, Jeannie Shank got a couple. And so when this show came around, she gave me an invitation to enter it. Uh, thinking that there was a chance to get back into that, and so I, I took her up on it. And one of the things that I had done was the what it specializes in, which is folding things out of one sheet of paper. <laughs> and when you do that, you come up with some strange patterns as a result of the folding up. And so I like the idea of the pattern being not just a leftover, but a thing in itself. So I tried to uh, develop a picture. And so now we have, obviously, a conflict. Uh, he's sitting and thinking at the same time he's trying to get out. <laughs> and I love how he leaves that shadow <laughs> behind as he makes his escape. Thanks, Ross. Very nice. Let's go to um, Jennifer Calvert Edwards. This, by the way, is one of her very first books. And you know, talk about engineering. L look at this, you know, beautifully engineered pair of baby shoes. Um, and uh, Jennifer is the mother of five kids. And that's her occupation. This was just a sideline. And when I asked her for more photographs and information, she said, well, frankly, she was just too busy <laughs> with the others. But we were lucky to have gotten this out of her. I'm sure those of you who have kids know the stories. These are the shoes that baby wore. And so let's put this here. These are the shoes that baby wore. These are the, so oh, wait, just a sec, sorry. Let's get the toes first. And then here are the socks that covered the toes and the shoes that baby wore. And th these are the laces. And then. These are the feet on wiggly legs that started to take those very first steps with the laces, tried to keep the shoes tight to cover the socks that warmed the curly toes that fit in the shoes that baby wore. And we end up here. It's pretty good for a first effort, isn't it? <laughs> and with five kids. All of them adorable and, you know, very articulate. We've had a good time. Remember I told you that one of the artists had a degree in engineering? And that was Michelle Pollack um, from Minnesota. And this is a, a book, she wanted it to be like a traditional book and that it folded flat. But it's about hexes and about the six-sided nature of love and about love that gets lost in the corners. And so she designed this book that folds flat 
but opens up into these six-sided pages. Isn't that interesting? In Alice in Wonderland, well, actually, let's start with an invitation that arrives here. This is the rabbit in the hat. And if I open this all the way, I should be able to get the rabbit to come out of the hat. <laughs> and the rabbit comes with an invitation here to a tea party. And uh, this is the invitation to tea. And this is the story here in the tea bag. But even though it's letterpress printed, it is printed in microscopic type. Can you read that? No. But she has very thoughtfully provided a magnifying glass. And at the tea party, the Mad Hatter says, offers a riddle. Why is a raven like a writing desk? And Alice ponders that. She gives it some thought. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Raven, writing desk. <laughs> So she comes up with some solutions. And let's see if we can discover why a raven is like a writing desk. A writing desk is also a dark wing sight. It says here, both have to do with bills. <laughs> now that's a very famous writer named Bill Shakespeare. And Tales, because William Shakespeare wrote tales, stories, and a raven has a tail, right? And here, they both slope. Can you see that both the raven and the desk slope? And they both, they both slope with a flap. Now, Kelly Houle uh, from Arizona, who did this book, uh, said that she was intrigued by this concept, it's the pen. And she said that every time she tried to explain to people why a raven is like a writing desk, she ended up flapping her hands and doing all these motions. Whereas she said, with a pop up book, she could say very eloquently, you know, what the similarities were here. Dear Alice, is a raven like a writing desk because they both stand on their legs? <laughs> here. Because Poe wrote on both. <laughs> Poe wrote on a desk, right? But he also wrote a very famous poem about the raven. Quoth the raven nevermore. And here, let's do one more. One is a rest for pens, the other is a pest for wrens. <laughs> and both hot to be made to shut up. <laughs> and then, let's see how this book ends. <laughs> yeah. It says, the higher, the fewer. <laughs> the higher you go, the fewer writing desks you find, and the fewer ravens. And if you open this up, can you see the Cheshire cat? Do you remember this Cheshire cat when the Cheshire cat disappeared and there was only a smile left? Let's see if we can see that. See? It disappeared and you just see the smile. Now, You've been a wonderfully patient as we worked our way through this. Tell me, what questions do you have? Any suggestions, any thoughts? What do you think of this idea about incorporating sculpture into a book format? Is that possible? You know, this is a really tough thing with books, is that books are designed to be seen in motion. And the sad fact is, is that 
you know, letting people handle an ordinary book is really tough, as any library will tell you. And as you can imagine with these books, they wouldn't last long. Uh, you know, particularly like, you know, you think it's going to open a certain way, yeah. but it really doesn't. So this is why books can't be handled in the show. But we tried to overcome that with the catalog by including the CD. Because in the CD, uh, you know, remember the bed bug book? There's this wonderful movie of the bed bug book opening where Emily Reiser is describing it. Uh, and the, um, the retroscope, the rotary flip book, there's a motion picture of that. All of the books, there's at least three or four photographs of each one. So we hope that that would help get the sequence across. There's additional information on the CD. It includes all the artist statements, all the um, uh, biographical information of all the artists. And uh, Julie Sadler, who is just so, I mean, that CD has 670, I think, files on it. Each file had to be created you know, by hand. I, I'm sure that um, uh, Barbara's son, Dan, who's here, Dan, <laughs> Dan is a tester for Sony, uh, for, for Tony, Sony Games, so you know how, many, how what it takes to get a file together like that. Um, but when you click on the, on the photo, th there's a figure that raises its hand and there's a, a, a little symbol that flies out of the hand and she picked up a different symbol for each book. You know, for the raven, you know, a raven flies up. Uh, and, and, you know, how she came up with all these different symbols and worked it in. But this project it was a total, there were 30 people that worked on putting it all together from the judges, uh, from the people here, from Jeannie writing the, the wonderful descriptions, uh, the, ph the photographs, the printers, the, the CD people in, in California who I'd never met, but they just got so excited on this. Um, Kyle Ullman I've never met. I'll meet him later this week at the Movable Book Conference. And uh, so, you know, it was just one of those things that, that came together. There was a call for entries that went out. We printed up 800 call for entries that we mailed out. And the call for entry itself was a pop-up book. And uh, this was also advertised on the book arts list and in different book arts publications. Uh, we received uh, 200 books, over 215 books were submitted for selection. And it had to be narrowed down to, to 53. And we did this with slides. Uh, and then uh, we actually looked at the books. But, um, you know, slides are how, how it's done now. Eventually it will be computer files, but for right now, slides are the deal. Any other questions? Yes. Did, okay. Thank you. Hooray!